electric current is the flow of charge. Here we see an example of an electric circuit. This is a circuit like you'd find in a light bulb used in a flashlight. We have a battery, a switch, and a lamp or light. And we have a complete path. The battery acts as a charge pump, pumping negative charge or electrons out the negative terminal of the battery through the light and then through the switch and back into the battery. We say that the circuit is open when it is not conducting. When the switch is open, it is off. When it is closed, it is on. That terminology can be a little confusing, but just consider that what it refers to is the contacts. When the contacts are open or not touching each other, then the switch is off. The contacts have to be closed in order for the current to flow. Well, this is a situation we have in most electrical devices. We must have some kind of a path for the electricity to return back to its source. It would not be possible to power a light bulb for very long if we did not have a return path. Well, it's certainly possible to have charge move from one location to another through a single path. If we don't have a return, the charge would build up to such a degree that it would stop flowing. So that's why we need to have a complete circuit for electricity to flow continuously, not just like a spark does or lightning. A useful analogy to understand electric circuits is the idea of a water circuit. Here we have a pump, some pipe, a valve or a tap, and we have a smaller pipe. And then below we have an electric circuit with a battery, wires, a switch, and some smaller wire. The pump is like the battery. It pumps the fluid through the circuit, just as the battery pumps the electric fluid, electrons, through the circuit. The pipes are like the wires. The tap is like the switch, and the small wire is like a small pipe. The valve can turn on and off the water, just as a switch can turn on and off electricity. The terminology, though, that we often use with valves is opposite of a switch. We say that a valve is open when it lets water flow through it, but we say a switch is closed when it lets electricity flow through it. If we open a tap, it is the same as closing a switch. If we close a tap, it is the same as opening a switch. That confuses many people, but just think about the contacts of the switch opening and closing and that will help you to understand why that terminology came about, as confusing as it is. As I described before, the pipe and the wire is much like each other in that they both have a flow of fluid through them. But here we have a small pipe. A small pipe acts as a restriction. It decreases the flow of the fluid through the circuit. In the same way, in an electric circuit, we can have a small wire. A small wire also acts as a restriction, or we often refer to it as a resistance. It decreases the flow of current. A small wire cannot handle as much current as a large wire. And so there are many analogies here that apply to electricity. Electricity is a type of fluid. We tend not to think of it that way because how can something flow through something that is seemingly solid, like a piece of wire? But remember from our previous discussions that solid matter is not really solid. There is actually a lot of empty space in it, or, well, maybe we shouldn't say it's empty. It's full of electric fields and forces. But as far as material, it is there is a lot of space in there and that is where the electrons can move through as long as they don't become captured by atoms along the way and, and a lot of materials like insulators we 
often find that the atoms capture the charges or hold them and then they don't aren't able to move from one place to another. In a conductor such as copper or aluminum or silver or iron, the in fact most metals are good pretty good conductors. We find that there's a lot of electrons that are free to move about from one atom to another and so they can freely move as a current or drift around. Electric current it has two different ways that is described for its flow. We can talk about electric current flowing from negative to positive as we have been. That's called electron flow and it really is the true direction of electron flow. Conventional current though is said to go from positive to negative. Conventional current came from the fact that that Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, guessed as to what direction electric current must flow from a battery. He knew that there were two terminals on a battery. He had, a, he had batteries and he experimented with them and he reasoned that one of the terminals would be the source of the current and the other would be the place where the current goes back in or the sink for the current. And he had no reason to believe that or know of which direction it went and so he made a guess. He guessed that it went from the positive side of the battery, what he called the positive side, to the negative side and it was arbitrary which one he picked. Now he could have reversed the, the positive and negative and, and he would have had it right but he happened to pick one end of the battery and to this day that standard was passed on through the years and it became known as the positive side of the battery and in fact but it's the place where the electrons go back so it's really backwards. We call that conventional current notation. However, does it really matter which direction it goes for most things? Well it does not because in most cases we really can't see the charge moving anyway. There are cases where it is important and it is valuable to understand which way the current flows certainly. As long as we're aware that there's two different ways that we can talk about current flowing then it's not a problem. But it, it would have been nice had you guessed the right one. Too bad. There are times though when electric current does flow according to Franklin's guess. In a semiconductor such as silicon which is a material which sometimes acts like an insulator and other times acts like a conductor. There are both electrons and holes that act like positive charges. Electrons being negatively charged go from the negative side of the battery towards the positive side. But holes which act like positive charges form near the positive side of the connection to the crystal of silicon and then move across the crystal towards the negative side where they are met by oncoming electrons which fill the holes. So holes really are just places where electrons ought to be but they do act like positive charges and they move like positive charges. Another example of where Benjamin Franklin is correct would be correct would be in a fluid such as the fluid in a battery like a car battery where you have ions that are able to move. Ions, for example, hydrogen ions which would be could be negative or positive but are typically positive because of the acid in the battery. Those ions are actually protons and they're floating around in the fluid and they are able to move from positive to negative. So in that sense Benjamin Franklin was right except that of course in wires it's electrons that move. Now current is the flow of charge and it is the rate at which charge moves. Current is equal to the number of coulombs flowing past a point in one second. We can describe that by this formula. Current equals charge divided by time. 
I stands for current or intensity of current measured in amperes. Q stands for quantity of charge and that would be measured in coulombs which is represented by the symbol C by the way and that's why they don't use I for current they use C for coulombs so they use intensity for current in fact well, maybe a hundred years ago the predominant name for current was electric intensity or just simply intensity so we uh, still use the letter I for that and then T represents time so if you want to calculate the current that is flowing through something you would take the amount of charge that moves through that something and divide by the amount of time it takes for that charge to move through that something in seconds now what is a flow of charge called it's called current isn't it current like lightning is an example of a momentary current the opposite of current by the way is static electricity where a charge builds up and stays stationary or sits in one place for a while lightning relies on a buildup of charge or static electricity in the clouds and the ground and then when it builds up a sufficient amount then a release of that charge is a current now here is we can apply our formula if 25 coulombs of charge flow by in five seconds how much current is that how would we calculate that well if we use our formula intensity of current equals the quantity of charge divided by time or current equals charge divided by time we can plug those numbers into our formula we get 25 coulombs divided by 5 seconds equals 5 coulombs per second and that would be equal to 5 amperes an ampere is 1 coulomb per second how long would it take for 8 coulombs of charge to flow at a rate of 2 amperes well keep in mind that 8 coulombs is the same as 8 amperes if it flew if it traveled in one second and two amperes would be two coulombs per second so if it's too low if two amperes is two coulombs per second how many seconds would it take for eight coulombs to move from one place to another at a rate of two two coulombs per second or two amperes well we would simply take the number of coulombs divided by the current in amperes which would be coulombs per second now this this is actually the formula that we started with I equals Q divided by T intensity of current equals quantity divided by time we can rearrange this formula with a little algebra and we get T equals Q divided by I time equals charge quantity of charge divided by current so that would be 8 coulombs divided by 2 amperes or 8 coulombs divided by 2a AC 8c divided by 2a equals 4 seconds so yes it takes 4 seconds for the current to flow at that rate what makes charges move through a conductor in order for you to have charge moving through a conductor you need a potential difference a difference in charge these two objects have a difference in charge and so we have a potential difference and if allowed to do so charge will move from one to the other from the one with greater potential to the lesser potential of the same charge or a difference of charge or it could be opposite charges it could be negative and positive